November 9th, 2009. Bill Eames is being interviewed by Brenda Hepler. Bill, we ask a few just standard questions. What are your first childhood memories of libraries? In Chico, California, where my father was a cabinet maker and we actually rebuilt and then built additions to the Chico Library at Second and Chico, California. And how important was reading to you growing up? Basically, growing up is mainly just schoolwork. I didn't really do any a lot of outside reading. And then you, of course, grew up in Chico then? Correct. Uh -huh. And what awareness of community did you have while growing up? Being one of the real old families in Chico, and my parents were involved in, in Chico, and they actually had my third generation native of Chico. Both my grandfather and father were born in Chico, so a, a small community is the way I grew up. And what kind of things were your parents involved in? During that time, the Odd Fellows, the Rebecca's, the encampment, and also that time we I was growing up during the Second World War, and my folks were very involved with entertaining different servicemen who were at the Air Force Base. My mother was a, involved with very much with the Presbyterian Church, and was both whatever the, I don't remember the title, but it was an advisory board, and then whatever they had with the board of directors of the Bidwell Memorial Presbyterian Church. And, she, and what was your education? Then? I have a degree in pharmacy from Idaho State. High school was in Chico. In Chico. Right? Yeah. What was your work experience then after that? After getting my degree in pharmacy, I opened the drugstore in Lafayette about 18 months after I got my degree in pharmacy. That and was what year was that? I opened the store in March of 1959 and started building a company since then. Lafayette it was my first store. It was my main store in corporate offices for about 27 years and then the corporate offices moved to Venetia at last. We ran out of space in Lafayette. And the Lafayette store was from First name was Akalani's Pharmacy because nobody knew my name. And Akalani's was the name of the high school. It actually is the original land grant of where we are. And after that, when I started having stores in multiple towns, I changed over to Bill's Drugs. And it was Bill's Drugs until it was, it was sold to Long's Drugs in 1993. Uh, I see. So that's how the Long's came. Yes. That name came on the pictures. Yeah. Otherwise, it was just good old Bill, yeah. right? Right, yeah. uh -huh. And as an adult, what were your early community experiences? I have been involved in Lafayette since the word go anywhere from Junior Chamber of Commerce to actually a Rotary. I, I have over 45 years at Rotary now. I have been involved in for many years Junior Achievement. And, uh, I have been in, in this city, involved in this city up till roughly early 90s when the, all my time was taken by the corporation. Yeah. Um, what attracted you to being involved in all these community activities? That's part, that was part of being a pharmacist in, in, mm -hmm. the, in, the, in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Pharmacy was so much different than what it is now. Towns usually had one or two major independent pharmacies, and those people were very involved in the community, anywhere from community foundation to running uh, functions. I was involved with the uh, Little League for years. I had been involved in supporting the Lafayette Arts and Science. Spouse was involved in PTAs over the years. Yeah. My kids were through all the high schools. Yeah. You and the community were like? I am very involved with together. Okay. And what attracted you to Lafayette in the first place? A building to open a drugstore. Ed Lewis, which some of the people really may remember, Lewis Supermarkets from years ago, pointed out to me that he thought Lafayette needed a drugstore. And I, I got introduced to Ed Lewis at that time. I was looking at a potential location on Walnut Creek. Ed says, no, Lafayette needs a drugstore much more than Walnut Creek. So I opened a store in Lafayette, and that's how I got started. And this was in 1959. I'm going to ask this question 
What changes have you seen in Lafayette over all these years? Well, I can remember when we tore up the center of our town when we put a 36-inch water main down Mount Diablo, which would be the late 59 or early 1960. Uh, I, had been, I was one of the original members when we actually had a site commission myself, uh, Dave McCullough, and oh, the gentleman that built all the 7-Eleven stores. Where I, where I, one of the early sign commissions. Lafayette has changed from a total strip town to somewhat of a suburban town. You can argue whatever those words mean. Uh, from what we used to have a supermarket on, on King's Market in the center of our town to really, we used to have auto dealers in our town. We had a cross for Mechanics Bank had where you had trampolines where kids would jump on, chaps, uh, hamburgers were over where they are now. Actually, the Wells Fargo Bank was at one time with a Ford agency with a car wash behind it. And so this, the town has totally changed. Defining the goals of the community as a place of mutual support, shared values, and acceptance of difference. How do you see Lafayette meeting those goals? Lafayette, in some respects, has no shared values. In some respects, does. Lafayette wants to maintain a rural bedroom community and therefore will never have a really business district. It is through times, many times, has done anything it can to not have it has a very shared value in the fact we have nice homes, we have, we're noted for our expensive homes, and therefore it's great for the people that were here in the 50s and 60s, but literally our children cannot move into the community unless they have family wealth or start off with a high paying job. And therefore, you'd say we have shared values and we want a nice living environment. We do not have shared values available for our children to come back in the community through zoning laws, etc., or we do not want a retail business area in our town. We really do not want local employment. We want fine living but with no local employment. If you define local employment of working within three to five miles of where you live. Interesting. Interesting. Um, how about diversity? We do not have we have diversity on the same economic level, but we do not have diversity at different economic levels. We have only in the last probably 20 years have allowed any of the blacks in. I can remember when Dr. Poston, a, a, a veterinarian, was the only black professional person in town, and we did not have anything really besides a white vocation neighborhood, and therefore, if you look at diversity of Lafayette and compare it to Lafayette, it's all right. If you look at diversity of for Contra Costa County, and I have been on the <laughs> a grand jury, we do not have diversity economically, socially, or by race in this town. Thank you. Do you have any memories of the Lafayette Library? Did you have, like, did you, the old library, did you the, use the, it much? See, my children used it a lot. I always worked long hours to build a business. I do not, my children coming through grammar school and all of that, mm -hmm. and they were there. I don't think the library in those years were used much as far as junior high school might have been a little bit, but next time high school kids didn't use that library now. How do you feel a library serves a community? It raises a question because what we're building is not really a library. What we are building is a town meeting place since we don't have any place for groups to meet. It's a little confusion, and I understand the reason of the quote different names, learning center. I was in the community foundation where we got the, the grant for the unusual right of the grant from the state. I think a library is really important as far as a place for, especially in higher income, whether you have more book desire to use books. I think you have a problem, though, in Lafayette do our, the union, uh, our county, and these libraries are run by the county. Therefore, we limit our hours so much. We really don't service some of the purpose. And uh, something 
we are going to have to look at as society. And we want our libraries available when a lot of people would use them and therefore may not have to or may not be able to work within union contracts or are we building something that's fancy and great and therefore the, the city does not want to support it to expand the hours. I hear that the, our new library is going to be open 10 hours a day or four days a week, shorter hours on Friday and Saturday, which I'm sure, under my own judgment, is a union function and nothing on Sunday. I really question that part and if you look at the building, although I have not seen a contract, it looks like part of the building can be open when the library is closed and therefore it is a public meeting place, not necessarily a total using the library all the time. And I think you've answered that. How, your involvement with the library over the years, I think you've answered that. And, and you've certainly answered all your questions. <laughs> that's, that's over the top. Okay, so then I'm going to go on to here for this um, 2008 okay. library. Were you involved in the 1996 study when you were part of the Community Foundation? Uh, yes, the location mm -hmm. and size, yes. And how, what was your involvement relative I'm, to that? I was on the board and sat in monthly committee meetings, went over new the different potential location. All right, so tell me some of these experience you had relative to that. Actually, study. The, the, the library is a function of two things. Ann Grodin bringing a group of people together and the original training under the East Bay Community Foundation of how to raise money for a library. And once we started raising funds for a library, we used to meet monthly. As a matter of fact, a number of the meetings have actually been held in my board meeting here. It raises the question, where is the center of Lafayette and where should the library go? As that evolved, the veterans were having problems because of the old veterans building and the aging veterans in a building without an elevator on two stories. At the same time, the Walnut Creek veterans was happening, the same aging process, no elevator. And so it came to a point where from a real estate play, and our, our library today is really a real estate play between the Walnut Creek, a developer in Walnut Creek wanting to buy out their building, become a part of the expanded Broadway Center, Lafayette veterans wanting something, and the two veterans organizations going together, agreeing to join, and then the Lafayette Community Foundation Board through the auspice of the library buying the Lafayette real estate. And between those two, they could buy the real estate on the, I'll call the open end of town and get a new, larger building totally given to them. Because the original veterans buildings were owned by the county and rented by the veterans for $1 a year. And they were county buildings. So part of this real estate play was from county property, which was given to the vets at the function of the Second World War, coming together, being allowed to be purchased, and no bidding process in exchange for a new veterans building in Lafayette, the two posts, I believe, is the terminology, coming together in a financial play, and the only way that this became possible. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> yeah, that's the, it's really, it's, it is what, uh, really the other locations, Burton Valley wanted as a pressure because you could take, if you take a circle in about three mile radius, the center or the library, if you believe library should go in the center, it'd be much closer to Burton Valley. When you look at a library closely enough where people live, is in the worst location where we are now because the majority of the people do not live within half to two thirds of a mile of the library. The majority of the people live beyond that, yeah, but it's again, it's a it's a location of availability. It is a good center location. And then if you look at it from the meeting place, it's 
ideal for a meeting place, a local meeting place may not be where you want to have children due to traffic. And so there was a trade-off there. Um, lots of trade-offs in any development along these lines. Uh, now, um, so you were very much in part then of finding the site, working with the, the, committee, yes. and the committee for finding the site, working with the veterans and all that, which is great. Were you involved with the vision task force? No. Oh, no. Okay. How did the vision evolve into a real plan? as you, you know, you got the site, you worked with the veterans, were you involved in after that at all? I stepped back after we raised the $20 million for the library. Okay, tell me about raising those, that $20 million. So you got the site. We got the basic site. Yes. We did a lot of fundraising and looking for gifts. Okay, um, and how did you go about doing that? Uh, that was part of the community foundation have holes set up for a uh, community foundation board, hired a fundraiser, mm -hmm. uh, people met, we had cocktail parties around, we had this that, that, uh, function to get people to make gifts. Our original plan was to have a much smaller library and to, in essence, raise the $20 million at that point to help raise the 20 when we got the major state grant, I believe the state grant to be eleven million dollars plus or minus something, and the original library was going to be smaller and be a library only. Then the vision got it growing until now. You would hear numbers. I'm not sure if it's 45 million or 48 million, 50 million, and there is some resentment in some of the business community the fact that there are probably dollars that should have gone other areas redevelopment dollars, I've heard of even accusation there is some, some parking fee dollars are being loaned back and forth. I stepped back approximately two, two and a half years ago. Uh, I felt that I had done my part of the community, raised the $20 million, mm -hmm. and from that point I stepped back and the, and the family has made a major contribution to the library and therefore we're on one of the boards. Now, in this first $20 million raising the first 20 million. Was that part of what they called the quiet campaign? We, we first had a quiet campaign. And so that was just going to like to major donors. And then we broke the quiet campaign loose. We broke from quiet to uh, major exposure probably four years ago. I was in the last two years of the general campaign. We probably had, as a matter of fact, I, we had, it's been six years since I agreed to my contribution. And that's when we really decided to go. So the, the library has probably been under thoughts and ideas for at least 10 years. Yeah, it's amazing. Okay, so you were there though, were, were you there when the idea of the con uh, consortium bubbled up? I was there right at I left about the time the consortium idea was, was going in. Uh -huh. The gentleman, I was trying to make, the, the started JFK, we have Bob up. Fisher. Uh, Bob Fisher came in and sold, more or less sold that idea. Once the state gave us the funds, that was more or less a springboard that we are building something besides a library. That's really when the community foundation, once the community foundation raised their 20 million, the, the community foundation as a foundation tried to look for something to do and a reason to be with a belief the community foundation knew how people should give their money better than the person did, and that I agree with. I think the person really knows how to give money. They don't have to give it to the community foundation which knows that's when I really stepped back. All right, could you repeat? The community foundation, after we raised roughly the $20 million for the library, yeah. did not have a focus. Okay. And therefore, they were looking for a focus, what to raise money for. Okay. Under the philosophy, the community foundation could know more where community 
funds should go than the individual person that wanted to give the money. And that concept, I disagree with. I think the person knows more how they want to give their money, not the community foundation. Interesting. Okay, thank you. All right, so, and then that is the point when you step back. Yes. And so the next question, I think, it moves beyond the time right. that you were there. Okay. Now, as far as the present library, is this new library important to you? I think it is important to our town. Mm -hmm. Since I basically read a lot of business books and buy a lot of business books, I do not go to the library per se. Mm -hmm. It is good for our town. It is good for the economics of the homes in our area. It is good for the people if we want to continue a trying to attract highly educated people that live in expensive homes and have higher standards of living, it is very important. That's where I think our town, through our homeowners association, wants to go. If you're looking for diversification, I have no reason to believe it will help the diversification of the town. Not the town, per se. To me, it's just two different things. And so then what transformation have you seen in Lafayette regarding the new library? Do you, do you see any, as far as community involvement, have, have you noticed any change or feeling as far as in the town relative to the new library? Uh, two. One is the Commonwealth Club, et cetera, things are, will help in town meetings. There's also a feeling, which I think we showed up on our quote gala last Friday night. There are specific groups of people that feel they do not want to go, and they felt that was really a high-end thing, and therefore $175 a plate. They felt, they, from a, both an image standpoint as well as an expense standpoint, right, that they felt that was the wrong thing to do right now. If we believe that our town, of which we have more empty retail spaces now than we've ever had, or should they, we have a high percentage of retail spaces. If you take an average of the last five years, our town is starting to see some of the economic downturn. Why put a most expensive thing out at those times? Our also town is seeing some trouble selling homes over a million dollars, as I still sit on a bank board and we get statistics. There are, our town is beginning to show some economic problems. Did we want to have this a library for everybody? And therefore, we'd add something more economical or more price for everybody? Or do we want the image of our million dollar homes or $175 dinners, et cetera? I think that's a question our town is probably going to have to address where it wants to go. Why then do you think? the citizens of Lafayette have responded so enthusiastically to this Lafayette project. There are some old families that gave money. If you're talking about the total citizens, or are you talking to people who are involved with the library? I think that's a good question. My understanding that roughly about one out of 10 people gave money. 25%. Uh, again, if it's 25%, I do not know where that is. I have not seen an economic breakdown, but 25% of those people, which our town, the last time since this year I saw, well over half of our town had advanced degrees after a BS or a BA from college. And therefore, we, if you're talking 25% of those, I could see where it happened. Again, it comes back to what does our town want? Do we want to be an exclusive town? Then you'd say 25% of the exclusive people participate. Do we want to be a town where our children cannot come back in? That's a question. Or as we mature as citizens, where do we, where do we move next? Now, I personally now have moved to Rossmore, and this is the same some of the questions we're asking of Rossmore, because Rossmore is much more mixed in fact, we have a lot of higher end people out there, and we have, in Rossmore, you have a, a number of people from the lower economic levels. 
I think it's something our town's really going to address. Do we want to be Hillsboro? Do we want to be at Los Altos? If we do, great. We are building in that way, and due to our zoning and the pressure groups of our town, which include homeowners associations, that if we don't want business, we're going to have to pay more taxes. And we have not had a good record of pay, wanting to pay taxes to build up our streets and uh, some of our other things. What outcome would you hope for from this new library? I really don't have any great views on that. Mm -hmm. It may turn into be more of a social senior center due to the aging of our community. I can see where that would happen. Now when you, you we, we talk about uh, the learning and sourcing, all right, Commonwealth Club. What does Commonwealth Club mean, and who are their membership? We we'll talk about the Lawrence Hall of Science. That, to me, normally means a younger group, you know, the not more group. Are we trying to have something to get younger people back in our town? If we are, can they economically be there? Uh, we talk about bringing the. Uh, Exploratorium out of Oakland Hills then. Are we getting some of these mixed bags? And I'm going to say 10 years from now we'll know more. How do you think the library might enhance our sense of community, the library and learning center? It enhance our sense of community. Can it open more? Make it more children friendly? And I think one of the problems our community has. So many people in our community don't understand the communities that surround us. I've also been a number of years on the, the food bank board. The average child in Lafayette, if whatever you want to call that, don't understand within 20 miles there are people worried about eating, not driving the latest Beamer. I've, I've chaired the John Muir Foundation Board. One of the things that John Muir, which I was involved in, is they have a closet out there. There are a number of people that come in under ambulance. They have to have their clothing cut off. They don't have a family to bring them clothing to leave the hospital, or they're going back to their own small apartment. We have found ways to fund this closet when I was out there. If the library and our city wanted to teach some children about different economic levels, it'd be the greatest thing, but I don't sure that we want to end the society. I'd like to, uh, to develop that concept a little bit. Do you see a potential for having outreach programs through this library? Outreach bring our children in connection with other, other children and bringing the other children into Lafayette or our children out. Well. Yeah. It could be. I think it, it goes back to the question. You go to Aquilinus High School. Last number I heard my daughter read, about 95% of all the students go on to continue education after high school. I'm also very involved in the state of Idaho since I chair a foundation of you take rural areas where less than a third of the students go on to continue education. Do we want our society to have understanding that 95% is totally unusual? And to, to mix some of these, or are we going to not and see where society is going? That's part of our national government right now. The whole, that's on one of the basis of national health. If we want all of these, do you, can you bring the lower societies up fast enough and stagnate upper society? Or does upper society not want to be stagnated? Or does you want to take some of the funds from upper society to help raise some of the lower society? As a society, this is something we have to decide. And I think it's a good question. It's 
not a one a year, one or two year project. It is what society has to, and this is a multi-decade type thing. One last question, and this isn't on the sheet, but you know, <laughs> you're my, my, my brain. Do you think that possibly, because of the programs and the ideas and the creativity that's gone into the development of this library consortium, that the city might become a little more introspective in order to really look at who we are as a community and where the direction we really want to go as a community and, and really think it, you know, at a deeper level than just say building a business or fixing up the park theater, or that sort of thing. No, I think if anything, this library, and it'll, t it'll see, time will tell, if the initial enthusiasm of some of these special things continue on. And a lot of these are more, if you again go back to economic, uh, maybe more of the upper level of the economy of our society. Uh, I think that's, that's left, to be, left to be found. I think it's a very good question. I guess that's one of the questions, as you probably well know. I sponsored the book Voices of Lafayette. That book was a originally concept of that book was when I was on the uh, community foundation that we'd have this book and we use it as a, a original part to promote the opening of the library to have people have a book about the, this heavily business community uh, and the growth of our town. From that, it evolved into the historical society, think about it, and from that point, the historical society came on with their own book and due to contract or negotiation, they should not publish it, and therefore it went back to the, the library foundation, and I got in contact with one of my old neighbors, the only reason that worked, and uh, that book was written by my, I guess, polite now, administrative assistant, Julie Sullivan, and the library, I'm told now, is using some of as one of the grand opening functions, and I'm not sure, but there has been a number of copies printed on that, and which is something that I want to keep some of the history of Lafayette alive. And Lafayette was not a necessary a, a town where it is more of a higher educated area, because if you go back, a lot of the people in here, Lafayette used to be more of a it was never a blue collar, but it was a working white collar, not not management white collar. Because remember, some of us remember when Greyhound buses used to go down Mount Diablo, about every five minutes another Greyhound bus would go to either Oakland or San Francisco. 